Muneswith Moylwinion. I've been photographing my ancient friends for decades, and ten years ago I started posting the images online under the hashtag Moylwins. A view of a place distributed around the world through tiny digital windows, a dialogue between here and elsewhere, with the intention of capturing the transient moods that can change by the minute, like a gust of wind lifting snow from the slopes. The mountains greet me each morning, and I walk their slopes nearly every day. They're ancient, unchanging, but never the same, and they never get old. I have a feeling for the land as an epic poem written over the aeons, laid down as sediment and rock strata. Layer by layer, line by line, verse by verse, to be revealed and read back by tectonic motion and erosion, changing light and rolling mists describe the landscape as space, rather than a view, as if the air in the valley is a cast of the ground. The light catching the mist rising from the Stulan Reservoir, and we can see clearly that they're not a row of peaks, but a circle around the Kum, a beautiful example of glacial erosion. When we see a landscape, the details mix in the eye, but when we zoom into a photograph, we find surprising colours, not only in the skies, the vibrant red or yellow of a wet leaf catching the light, the purple of grass seeds, glints of feathers, flowers or berries, tiny things we may not have noticed. So I lift colours, samples from the images, and compose visual poems, laying them down line by line, layer by layer, following some of the conventions of written poetry, lines and columns, in what I call land poems. A form of post-literate abstraction that owes something to Mondrian's grids, so they can be read in any direction, from any point or square in the grid, like playing virtual chess with your eyes. Summer meadows across the high ground, echoing that opening shot of the snowy slopes. And this was Summer Solstice 2017, the hottest June day for over 40 years, yet we also had a heavy hailstorm that same day. I enjoy how it almost looks like a classical Chinese scroll painting. This is from the Processionals series made using combined processes, taking colours from the land, laying them down as watercolour, as manipulated photograph, and digitally generated, matching the colours by eye, and exploring the relationships between those modes of perception and recording and reflecting. And back to using photographic sources, we're into autumn with these two, and I enjoy land poems where some asymmetry and chaos disrupts the composition. Winter now, and I began thinking of these as verses in a poem, and how they could be read next to each other, and could be used in sequence to compose longer poems with a narrative progression. 
what I call land sagas, such as this one displayed in the library's reading room and also viewable from outside through a large window when the library was closed for a long period. So a viewer could look to their left and see the real mountains glancing between the reality and my visual responses. When I can, I try to include birds in the sky that draw our attention to the view as a three-dimensional space that we live in, surrounded by the horizon as an uneven circle. A lucky alignment of three jackdaws with the moon there, the veil still in shadow, and the slope slit by the warming light of dawn. So I moved from line by line to the circular motif, where the dark spot is the shadow beneath my feet and the land surrounds, again using a combination of watercolour, manipulated photography and digitally generated imagery. And asamic writing is another post-literate form I enjoy, using the conventions of handwriting along with the shapes of crags and cliffs and the line drawn where mountains meet sky in circular poems, a kind of frenetic Western response to the calm Zen art of the Enzo circles. And here the drawn horizon is not where land meets sky, but where my internal landscape meets the external, as I realise the sky, and indeed the horizon, are illusions specific to each one of us, how we each perceive and where we stand. And that circle extends beyond horizons, bigger circles, seasonal cycles. Our planet, circling the sun, from our private interior landscapes to the cosmic scale, or, to quote that classic television series, to experience the awe and mystery which reaches from the inner mind to the outer limits.